Hey guys, this is probably my final work in progress update on the Berserker Rex, which is what I'm calling him now. If he's going to have a silly name, at least it's the one I gave him, damn it. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, I finally finished the kit bash weapons array for the back, so all that's left is a display base, and this build is done. Now, what you're about to see is my first attempt at doing voiceover commentary on footage shot at the bench, so prepare for some awkwardness, but we're doing this. I did promise recently that I'd start filming myself building more often, so here we go. RoboShop I didn't start with much of a plan beyond wanting to mount the big Gatling gun from the Red Horn CP unit on the back somehow. I just kind of let the parts I had guide me. This was a mock-up I did early on where I pretty much just used about 30% of the backpack that the kit comes with. So the first problem I had to solve was how to mount my own backpack on the Zoid. Here's the bottom part of that original one from the kit. I thought about cutting out this connector here, but that really seemed like too much hassle. The basis for the entire structure is these two detail parts from an iron kong that I glued together to form this sort of motorcycle engine looking thing. To mount this on the back I made this out of two pieces of plot plate to glue underneath. This then mounts on this rectangular piece. And this piece is the same width as the bottom of the original part from the kit and so it slots into the opening on the Zoid's back the same way. Next, I needed a way to attach the arm that holds the Gatling to the backpack. This piece belongs to some joint or other on the original backpack from the kit, and as you can see, the hole is just about the right size for the peg. So, I sawed off that peg on the bottom, and that's actually one of the few things I didn't actually do out of frame, so here's some footage of me sawing stuff. I also just kind of sanded it reasonably smooth with a metal file. This doesn't need to look pretty, it just has to fit. And as luck would have it, the part does fit pretty much perfectly. Now once I had glued that in place and tested it real quick, the more fun process of rounding out the general shapes and greebling it all up a bit started. Notice also that I had added a peg on the bottom by now. For the front, I have this piece that came from a Gundam head. I think this is from the same S Gundam that I got the fuel tank from. For the back, I used this arm from the same Gundam kit. It had a hole that needed to be puttied later, and also these two peg holes. I covered those up with these plastic caps from a Masterpiece Zoids kit. I also added this big brown part of unknown origin to the side to add some detail and also to take care of that seam line for me. On the other side I attached this round piece along with a rock cut from a sprue to mount the big pointless cool looking fuel tank contraption. That's the scientific term for that thing. And this is what all that looked like glued together. At this point I still needed to figure out how to cover up the top and this big empty space on the other side. I tried a bunch of greebles for this. The most important piece was maybe this piston looking part that's actually cut from a D-Bison cannon like so. And that was the greebles all done and looking pretty good. That still left these three problem areas though that clearly needed to be detailed up a bit. On the front I put these two round uh, vent things. I have no idea where these came from but they're pretty cool. This piece is from one of the weapons in the same CP unit as the Gatling gun. The style of detail actually looks a bit like the Berserk Fuhrer's armor so I decided to paint it white along with this piece here and put it on top. 
And finally, there's this thing, also from that CP unit, that I decided to mount on top by means of this, um, Godo's belly button, I guess. So I drilled a hole through that piece and cut away at the peg here a bit, and that way it all stuck together pretty well. And here's what the whole contraption looked like when I test fitted it all before painting. Kind of like a Lego set built by a kid who's too lazy to sort the pieces by collar, but I was pretty sure at this point that it was going to work. A quick test of what it would look like mounted on the Zoid's back also confirmed that the overall shape and dimensions worked pretty much the way I had hoped. It sits pretty far on the back and the top of the backpack kind of continues the line from the chest armor. I figured that by adding the two pieces painted to match the armor I just might have something that made sense visually. First though, I still needed an ammo belt and at this point I was still convinced that I was going to scratch build one out of plaw plate. For your amusement, here's, I think this is my third attempt. I basically made a stick out of two thin and two thick pieces of plow plate and tried to cut it into somewhat evenly sized pieces. That did not work at all. One problem was this. The damn thing kept coming apart from the force the knife exerted on it. It also proved to be significantly harder than I thought to get the individual segments into even somewhat matching sizes. After literally weeks of this and other failed attempts, I finally caved and bought a whole entire Master Grade Gunpla, the uh, GP05, just for the ammo belt and a few greebles, but at least that solved my problem. So that's the ammo belt from that kit stuck into the slit in the back that you may have been wondering about. It's surrounded here by these yellow vents and a piece of hand armor from the GP05. On the other end is this contraption I made from the piece it's meant to slot into on the source kit. Another greebly bit from that same kit and a small piece of plow plate to close it up. The wires in the ammo belt basically slot into it like this. And after hours of trying to come up with a better way to attach it to the Gatling, I decided to just super glue this to the side and be done with it. This is still the one thing on this build that feels like a cop out, but honestly, it looks totally okay. Well, and then I painted it all up, and here's what that looks like. Um, if you've been following along with this project, then uh, you'll notice that uh, there isn't anything unexpected going on here, of course. I just sort of tried to replicate the... Uh, paint choices I made on the on the uh, rest of the kit so basically here you have this is Vallejo gun metal this is Vallejo dura aluminium uh, painted on some gold details with retributor armor tiny bit of red here with Mephiston red uh, the whole thing then got a uh, wash with Nuln oil followed by a dry brush with Tamiya chrome silver and uh, I think I went back to the Mr. Hobby uh, Rust, actually, because I finally restocked on that. If you've been following the ongoing saga of how I didn't have one of my favorite paints anymore. <laughs> uh, this and this, the white parts, of course, were painted the same way as the armor with uh, pre-shading with Tamiya Light Gray and then painted white on top of it, followed by a gunk wash, which also meant that there was a whole week where I couldn't do anything yet again. Yeah, and that's it really. This cap was this cap was left over from uh, the kit, so I put that on here. Uh, I painted these uh, caps I mentioned earlier the same color so that they would look kind of at least similar. And uh, this is dry brushed and stippled with Tamiya red and Tamiya flat black, if I remember correctly. Uh, and that's really all there is to it. The idea was, as you can see, and like I said, the idea was just to make sure that I paint this in colors that match the um, that match the kit as closely as possible so that it looks like it actually belongs on there as opposed to some weird kit bashy contraption that I came up with that has nothing to do with uh, the original Kotobukiya kit. But yeah, that's it.
Well, and that's where we are now. The one problem I still have is that the backpack tilts slightly to the side from the weight of the Gatling, so I'll have to stick some plow plate in there, or maybe just wrap something around the peg to make it fit a bit more snugly. I've also now actually sketched up a display base for this thing, so that's still happening, but it won't be anything too crazy. Just like a rectangular piece of metal corridor floor, basically. And that's it for this one, folks. Like I said at the start, this is probably my final work in progress video for this build, unless I decide to do one just for the base. Once that's done, I'll just do a showcase video of the completed build and maybe talk briefly about it at the start. In the meantime, thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, Patreon, you know, and I'll see you in the next one.